Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. And today I'm doing a workflow video in Topaz Studio 2. I use Topaz a lot. I really like their products. And what I'm often doing in studio is using the, what they call stylistic filters. These are things like abstraction and impression to create um, either interesting effects in maybe my cityscapes or landscapes or to create kind of a painterly kind of look. And it's really good at that. And I talk about that in a lot of videos. And I do a lot of examples in my Topaz videos of how I do that. But I've had questions from people that are saying, you know, hey, but, you know, Studio and Topaz looks like it's artistic stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't do those those kind of edits. I don't want to make my photos in a, into paintings. So should I get Studio or not? And that, that kind of made me realize that, hey, guess what? I, I mostly talk about the art filters in Studio. And again, it's because I really like them and I like art and I like creating those kind of impressionist kind of looks but everybody doesn't. And so this is a workflow of doing kind of a, a traditional non-artistic workflow in studio because you can do it. Studio has a lot of power, a bunch of amazing filters, and uh, I just think it's a wonderful product. So I wanted to do that. And so um, I started with this photo, here we go. And this is a shot from Prague in the morning, um, slightly overexposed, that sort of thing. And then after a little bit of work in studio, I turned it into that, which is, you know, it's it's not artistic to me. It depends. Everybody's definition of artistic is going to be different, of course. In this case, I'm saying it's non-artistic because I did not apply stylistic enhancements uh, with the art filters, right? I did contrast. I did color. I did light. I did detail. I did those sort of things, which you would do in other editors. And that was a quick and simple kind of um, workflow that I walked through. So I'm going to reset these filters, and then I'll walk you through what I did here. Okay, I'm going to start by getting a plus filter. And the stylistic, artistic ones I'm talking about are at the bottom under stylistic. So that's abstraction, which I use a lot, and impression, which I also like quite a bit. But I won't be using those. Um, I'm going to start with the basic adjustment. And the first thing I notice here that you have noticed as well, I'm sure, is it's too bright. Um, and that's true. So I'm going to take the exposure down. I'm going to go like a negative 40 or so. Um, something, you know, about like that. And again, I'm just trying to control the light. So... Um, I think that looks much better already, to be honest. And I'm gonna skip over clarity right now. I'm gonna go straight into saturation. I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. So maybe, you know, like low 30s, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of bump of tint as well. And that's really it for basic adjustments. So let me just turn that off. There's before, and there's after. And honestly, um, you don't really have to do much more than things like that if your photo's fairly well exposed, which this one, you know, I think it's a little bit bright, but other than that, I mean, it just needed to be um, fixed in terms of brightness. And of course, I wanted to give it a little color punch, but already it's looking a lot better and just darkening things allowed me to pull a little bit more contrast into the image and some, uh, some more interest, I think, visually speaking. Now that I said contrast, I'm gonna go get one of my favorite filters. And this is a very powerful one I use a lot and that is called Precision Contrast. It gives you the ability to uh, affect contrast in lots of different areas of the photo. So I'm gonna start with these, uh, the low slider, I'm gonna go to about 14, and then I'm gonna take medium to about maybe 25 or so, something about like that. One of the things I like about this is you have this lighting section in precision contrast, so you can affect the lighting in the different areas. I'm actually gonna go into shadows, I'm gonna take that down a little bit, I've added contrast, and now by darkening the shadows, I'm kind of adding a little bit more contrast, because contrast is, of course, the difference between the bright and the dark parts of the photo. So if I'm making the shadows even darker, I'm increasing contrast a little bit. So I might go a tiny bit more, maybe something about like that. And again, I mean, if you look at the original to the current state, I mean, we've come a pretty good ways. Uh, but there, of course, there's still a few more things I want to do to the photo. The other thing I like about precision contrast is down here, you have saturation, vibrance, and color contrast. I'm just going to give it a little bit of vibrance. Uh, and that's simply just a personal preference because I like color so much. Um, certainly not required. The scene has a lot of different colors in it. There's blues, there's kind of orangey yellows and reds, uh, and there's a little bit of magenta as well. So it's already got a fair amount of color in it. I just like to give it a little bit of kick. And that's what Vibrance does. It tends to take the non-dominant colors and give them a little bit of kick versus saturation is more global and gives every color a kick. So I like to use Vibrance more often than I use saturation. Okay, the next thing, um, you know, so, so far I've worked on light, a little bit of color, and some contrast. Something else that people work on on a traditional kind of edit is detail. And just like precision contrast, 
One of my other favorite filters is Precision Detail. As you can see here, it gives you a lot of different control over different areas of the photos. You can also go into shadows and highlights specifically to impact those areas with detail. In this case, I'm just gonna to go to medium detail and this is gonna just impact the entire photo. And I'm gonna to go to about a 22. In fact, I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. You can see how it's crisping up the photo. Let me show you. Uh, I'm gonna close that. Let me turn it off. There's before, let me zoom in. That would be a little bit better. Um, so if you look at the detail, just look here in the face of uh, like these buildings. I'm gonna turn that back on so it's off and on. You can see it's getting a little bit crisper, which I like and I think that looks great. So, I'm gonna hit fit to go back and I'm done with that. So basically I've done some light, some color, some contrast and some detail. Now there's not a whole lot more I really need or necessarily want to do to the photo, but I do wanna demonstrate that there is a curves filter in uh, Studio as well. And so just like in other products, curves works the same way here. You have the overall tone curve and then you have specific color curves. All I'm really gonna do is just add a very slight S curve. And I mean, I'm talking really slight um, and there you go. So here's the before the S curve and the after. All the S curve does is give it a tiny bit more contrast and this is global in nature. So I like to use that just to give it a little extra oomph and a little extra kick. And, and that's really primarily the edit. The last thing I do is there's, um, let me zoom in and you know, there's not really a lot of noise in the sky, but one of the great, great sliders or filters here is AI clear. So I like to go into that and AI clear gives you the ability to go in and as you can see you can remove noise but you can also recover details and mess with exposure and clarity. So I'm going to go ahead and hit medium and let that calculate. Now note that it does take a moment for it to kind of run through and calculate because it is AI based and so it's uh, it's kind of running through its um, thinking, uh, I guess. I don't know what you call it, but it takes just a moment to get it completed. Okay, and there you go. So let me uh, turn this off. There it is before AI clear. So you can see a tiny bit of, uh, no, I mean tiny, and this is honestly, it's not really even noise. It's just a little bit of texture that you can see in the sky. And you can see, you know, the uh, not bad sharpness, if you will, around uh, the, the front of that, uh, that building. But if I click and turn this back on, you can see it is crisper and the noise has been reduced. And so AI Clear, honestly, is one of the, um, I would say it's not a hidden secret. Um, I think it's a well-known tool, but it's something that I haven't talked about in a lot of my Topaz videos, but I absolutely love it and adore it. It's a great filter and tool to use. So that's a traditional sort of edit, non-artistic. And let me show you the original. There it is before and there it is after. And really, this was maybe you know just five to seven minutes of experimenting, just using the basic adjustment to get sort of the light under control, contrast and detail, uh, curves, and then of course AI clear for a final touch up. But um, I think you have the options in Topaz to do a lot of powerful edits without even getting into the artistic stuff. The nice thing is you can save these as Topaz Studio files, which is what I did here. So you can go file and save project or save project as if you're renaming it. Um, save it to your desktop and then come back to it later because something I might do is say, I really like that. It's a traditional non-artistic edit, but being the one, the type, if you will, that likes artistic edits, I might say, hey, I've got all these filters. Maybe I want to come back later and add a look, go into artistic and maybe come down here and get like a Van Gogh kind of thing. Uh, and then go stick it on uh, on top, right? So um, you've got a lot of options. I'm not gonna get into that because I'm trying to stay with the non-artistic traditional edits here, but you have those options, especially if you save it as a studio native format file. You can come back to it later and edit again or enhance your edit. But that was really it. I wanted to walk through a typical workflow. I'll be back with more studio videos. I really do like the product. It's got a lot of power. It's a lot of fun. It's really easy to use. And that was it, my friends. Just wanted to share a non-artistic sort of traditional workflow in studio. So thank you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, just go ahead and knock that button down and uh, give me a subscribe. If you like these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up. That helps me a lot because it tells YouTube that you like what I'm doing. And I hope you do. So thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.